Shea Bear 1000 here. As you can see behind me, there's a hot water tank. This hot water tank has got to go, guys, and I'll explain to you here in a minute. But I'm going to show you how to change one of these out. It's real simple. This is an electric one. Gas is a little more touchy, so be careful if you're going to deal with that. I don't have a gas one, or I would show you how to do that. This one's electric, so it's, it's simple. But there may be an issue we're going to run into, and we'll get to that as well. Stick around. Let's change this out. Okay guys, so what's been going on with this thing? It's been happening for a long time. This is a very old tank. Right behind here and right behind there are heating elements. Now, the issue that we've been having for a long time is rust. I did a video a year or two ago of when we drained this tank and there was a bunch of sediment in the bottom of it, rust, and what's happening is and it's pretty filtered so and you can't run a filter you can't run hot water into a filter okay so <clears throat> it was turning monkey's hair red <laughs> so uh, I drained it and it worked all right for a while but I knew it wasn't gonna last I didn't think it would last this long but it but it has now the problem I had when I drained this tank was up inside here um, what's going on is it's, it's filling up with sediment you know we do have hard water but like I said it is pre-filtered but it's mostly rust sediment and stuff like that it's filled up past this so I don't know how I'm going to drain that okay so I may just have to grab it and growl which I'm not supposed to do now what I've done also is I've I've uh, ran all the hot water out of it okay um, because I already had this shut off, but I decided I'm going to show you how to check and make sure the power's off. <coughs> so, all the hot water's out of it. And your hot and cold is always printed up here on top, or it'll have a red and blue. So, um, but normally, you'll have a valve going in to your tank. Okay, and that'll be your cold water. But let's go ahead and shut this off right here and I will also uh, shut it off outside at the main just in case there's an issue with this one and these are those um, shark bites these are freaking awesome guys and I'll be showing you some more about these later on the install this is your pop-off valve if it builds up too much pressure for some reason uh, your thermostats in here go bad builds up too much pressure uh, this will pop and shoot water out of there now now code says this needs to come down and be within six inches of the floor as you can see it is not uh, so there I do have a hole in the wall where I think this one actually went but uh, what I do what I'm gonna do I won't be able to do it today because I don't have the right all the stuff I need I'm just going to run this down and out through that hole in the wall. And I think that's what that was there for. Jesus, monkey messaging me, scared the hell out of me. Okay, now like I said, when I drained the hot water, all I did was uh, just turn the hot water on, turn all your hot water on, let it run. Now, mine wasn't hot enough to burn me. That was another reason. Um, it's been getting to where it's just been, <sighs> I mean, it wasn't even sauna hot, you know, it was just, it was kind of hot, but I mean, you could just turn straight hot on and take a shower and not get burned. So I knew one of the elements went bad. And last night, it was just lukewarm. So I knew the other element went bad, but overnight it started heating up again a little bit. Um, so I'm going to show you. So anyway, this, this thing's got to go. Um, I looked at the date on it, and it is a 1989. So, um, if this is a 40-gallon tank. We're putting in a 50-gallon tank. And this is two 4,500-watt heating elements. And that's what we're putting back in here. Um, it's going to be by the same company, but 
uh, it's going to be 50 gallons so we're going to have uh, 10 more gallon than what we have now which does make a difference but that'll be plenty plenty for this little house single bathroom you know so uh, I want to show you how to check this power because we want to make sure this power is off and see like right now the power I did turn the power back on because I wanted to show that to you but I don't hear it heating up or anything usually you can hear this thing heating up okay so right under here is a Phillips screw this is where and this is your ground right here this is where your uh, 220 comes in okay and right under here is your wires now let me get you on the stand and I'll show you what I'm gonna do so right under here is our wires be very careful when you do this just in case somebody didn't put a wire nut on or something because you never know now this is not the original hot water heater for the house I think it the original one had gotten stolen uh, when the house sat empty because they they took what copper they could and all that kind of stuff um, and up there they took all this this is all added on which I did not do so I know somebody had put these on so this tank was probably just one they had sitting around in a shop somewhere but it is a 1989 now there's our wires okay it's black red and then the ground is over here I already showed you that now I'm going to use my tester here if you don't have one of these okay I'll tell you how you can test them but this okay now if you're if your hot water tank your uh, circuit breaker for your hot water tank if it's labeled that's cool that's well and good now I happen to already know what the hell I happen to already know which one this is because I shut this off before when I drained the tank that one time now anytime you drain a tank gas or electric you want to shut the power off or the gas off okay because these things will still try to kick on because it doesn't sense any hot water so it'll kick on you'll burn your heating elements out okay so and gas the same way you don't want that big flame up under there you know cooking on nothing so make sure you do that even if you're just drain, draining the tank okay um, uh, another thing is now if you don't have one of these I, I would still check even if yours is labeled if you've never done anything you know what what if what if someone labeled it wrong or something got moved and that label got left there and I see ours ours I had to check it because when the house sat empty you know when it was just it was pretty much demolished when the vandals came in they spray painted a bunch of stuff and of course they spray painted overall you know the on the the door of the panel where it says you know living room bathroom hot water heater whatever they spray painted over that so I did check it now I happen to know which one it is it is the top one on mine uh, yours you know of course could be way different now if you don't have one of these tools and I wouldn't suggest trying to probe that that's 220 with a multimeter okay if you don't have one of these tools best thing you can do is get you a good flashlight a headlamp camera light whatever shut your main off to your whole house and it'll definitely kill the power to this okay just shut your main breaker off I mean if you got to set a couple clocks later that's fine that's better than you know because you can't reset yourself right so let's be safe so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and shut this off as you can see there's power let's go shut it off and I'll be right back and we'll check it and make sure it is off okay now I flip the breaker and as you can see this is dead so this is safe to work with now okay so let me take these out here now on these just hook these up the same exact way to your new one as these ones are okay but what it is is your black wire from the tank is going to hook up to the black wire okay your red wire will hook up to the white wire and then your ground of course will be grounded over here somewhere that it'll have a screw for it okay let's go ahead and take our ground off all right there's our ground 
Now this, I'm not sure how they got this put in there. I hate sticking my finger in there because of spiders. So I'm guessing it's held in here. Maybe. Never seen that set up quite like this before, so that's not going to do it. See, there's that thing. Let's go ahead. Take these two screws out here. Like I said, this thing's been acting up. That's why I drained it, and I'm pretty sure I said there's no I'm not going to be able to drain it again in that video because uh, you drain it too many times when they're that bad, and you're pretty much asking for a leak, you know. So okay, so this we're going to go ahead and unhook these. Again, just to make sure there's no power. Before I go grabbing on to 220. If you shake this, sometimes it'll beep. So there, we're good to go. There's no, no power. So, We gotta try to figure out how to get these up through here. Just like this. Okay, here's something that that I see that I don't like. Can you guys see that? There's a rip. See there's a bare wire there. So I'm probably gonna have to trim that back or something. because you can't have that make sure there's no more yeah that's that's a bare wire definitely a bare wire no good okay so we will address that when we put a new one in monkey was messaging me telling me shit that she's on her way she's done she only had one patient today. She was supposed to be off, but. I don't think, I may just have to clip that wire there. There, there we go. Now what I like to do, is go ahead and put these back on, if they will. These ones don't. Sometimes if they'll screw on, screw your wire nuts back on. Okay, so we don't have to worry about this anymore. Move these. This. See, that just beeped when you shake it sometimes when you shake it. But as you can see, we just touch these and they're fine. So, all right. I will save those screws. Now what we're gonna do, now these, these shark bites here, they have a tool that pushes that down. Now you can use a wrench that'll go over that and push it down and you can pop, pop them out. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and cut these. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is cut it up here, right here at this elbow, and right here at this elbow, and I'll run my lines. I don't know how tall the new heater is going to be. I know it's a tall one, but I don't know if it's, you know, going to be like this much taller or what. So I'm using, I'm going to use the flex lines on it, and that's perfectly fine. So now i got to see if I can get this thing green out the back door here. And... Uh, Like I said, I, I went ahead and shut the outside water off too. Uh, a lot of plumbers don't like when you use a hacksaw on these. They've got a cutter. Now I've got a pair, but my blade's broke. So it looks like a 
looks like a weird pruning shear and it cuts them right off but what I'm going to use is uh, I got like a drywall cutter over there I'll show it to you I'm going to use that on these like I said I will probably cut it off here right there and I will be saving these so but first thing I got to do is try to get this drained or I'll never get this thing out of here by myself so uh, I'm sure there's not 40 gallons in it no more all that sediment probably took away about 10 gallons of it but let me see if I can get it to drain my fear has come to pass look at that and I assure you it's not this is just what little bit came out of that got a little hose out there that little hose on the ground uh, that came out of it actually came out of the hose as you can see nothing's coming out of this so rather than flood the garage I'm just gonna have to manhandle this some way or another um, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and and cut these and uh, get them get them off here so I can get this out that's anything that's left keeping me from getting this hot water tank out of here so hopefully hopefully I can get it out of here without hurting something like myself okay guys um, let me get you set up and I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to use to cut them off this is what I'm going to use this little cut off tool here I've got a new blade for it but I think this one will work so right now I'm just going to cut it off right here and I'll cut this one off right here just for now that should be okay there we go alright now set this over here All right, these are going to be out of my way. Now, I got to try to get this thing out of here. So, uh, I'll set you up outside and I'll show you. Hopefully, you'll see me bringing it out. <laughs> Hang tight. Alright guys, watch yourselves, coming at you. There we go, let me show you the rust that's coming out of this. Look at that. Not good, huh? huh. Alright, monkey's on her way, we're gonna go get the new one. And I'll film what I can for you of that. It should be a little bit lighter. <laughs> Look at that. And I think, I'll see if I can get this valve out of here and I'll show you all the goop that's in that. Amazing. That's what we was showering with, washing dishes with. Wow. That's all rust, guys. I did get the uh, the water spigot out of the bottom, and I heard a big thump. It sounded like a rock fell in. So I'm guessing all that stuff just came loose from shaking this thing around and dropped down in. Of course, I couldn't do that in there to drain it, but once this drains, it won't be that, pat that bad. I'll drag it out of the way. And what we're going to do is... I'll probably bring the truck right through here like we did when we brought the stuff back for the shed and I'll pull up that way and I'll just back up in here this one will be moved and I'll back up in here as close as I can 
and we'll just unload it and I'll drag it into the door. We are going to get a new drip pan for that. If they're not cracked, they'll be fine cleaning up. Clean them up, they're fine, but that one does have a break in it. So we'll just get a new one. Um, we're going to be looking at right around 510, 520. It just depends. But the tank itself is 449, and I'm going to buy those, the flex hoses. They are, uh, they're 15 bucks a piece. So there's 30 bucks, and then I don't know what that'll cost. And then, of course, there'll be tax on that. But I'll let you know what the overall price was for that. Um, look at that. That's just, that's horrible. But what do you do? You know, you don't have, oops, sorry. See that? And you can just hear. See, I just blocked it off. With all that sediment, just came and blocked that off. Wow. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but look at that. See, some of this, that's calcium. That's rust. There might be a little bit of sand in there because when we first got together, see, she had a whole new pump and stuff put in before we got together. And he never put a filter, never put a water softener or anything in it. So there might be a little bit of sand in that, but look at that. So I usually try to drain these once a year, but this one I knew the first time I drained it, it wasn't gonna last long, so I thought I'd better not drain it again, so. But yeah, that's that, all that stuff. Look at that. Actually, a big piece of rust there. That's all coming out of that tank. Jesus. Not very healthy either. That other one's two hundred pounds easy. It was a lot more than that before I drained it. Well, I drained out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this is really easy. Alright, she's in, huh? Well, you got water in there, but it don't matter. Now we're hooking up. This is just self-explanatory. Screw these down in here. This just screws in like it does on any metal box tightens down then you run your wires down through and then put your, your little cap on here tighten these two screws now there we go we're gonna hook the black to black and red to white okay so I've already got the ground there's a ground screw right down here in the bottom of here on this new one real convenient and I fixed that that little bare spot in that one wire remember I showed you taped it up real good and I think the hardest part is trying to get these wires back up in there. So you got 10 pound of wire in a five pound bag, right? So. Sure. Monkey's behind me learning, right monkey? Mm-hmm. You learning? Yeah, watch and watch and. Hide and watch, right? have to do this guys but I like to on 220 110 I don't worry about it too much but I like to tape these up on the 220s washers dr or dryers hot water heaters stoves things like that just a little extra precaution right mama yeah so this came out to what was it, 52676? Sure. 
Anyway, it was something like that. Five. That was. Yeah, it was. Oh, we got to take the pan back because that pan's not going to work, and I can't put a bigger pan in here. There's just not enough room. So I've got this one is at an angle, so if I do have to drain it, it's at an angle. I can just drain it out. Um, but the pan was 15, and get this, it's an aluminum pan, right? And um, they had 12 of them there, and there was only one that wasn't. I mean, these things look like they'd been run over, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, they wasn't just like a little nick here and there, or a little ding. They looked like they had been actually run over. So. Every one of them. Yeah, every one of them did. So, now we're going to put, put this on here. This just goes in like this. And you put your screw down in here. And the, uh, like I said, the lines were 15 bucks a piece. Uh, that's that shut off is good, so I didn't get the one with the shut off. It's 30 bucks on its own. So if you need to put a shut off with, which I would recommend, anytime you replace your hot water heater, if it don't have a shut off going into the water heater, put one in it. You know, it's 30 bucks, and it hooks on the same way these do. The only difference is it's just got a so that's uh, it's just got a uh, valve on it so it's off the old one it's off the old one all right now we need to pop these things out see blue says cold and red says hot so you can't mix them up okay guys so these stay in their heat traps it's like a little stopper in there now these they just all right this is the cold you're gonna push that up on and then pull back and make sure it's all the way in there once you pull back, that should be it. Now this, a lot of guys will tell you to put tape on here, but remember, it doesn't seal here, guys. It's got a little rubber seal up inside of here. And then this is like a plastic rubberish type thing. It's going to seal there. So if it leaks anywhere, it's still going to leak out of here. So putting thread tape on here is a waste of time and a waste of thread tape. Okay, so... I was going to get the 18 inch, but I wasn't sure if I had to do any modifications or anything like that. So I went ahead and got the 24 inch. 18 inch ones are, of course, less expensive. And I love these things. See, got the notch here. It's just kind of like a wrench, it just fits right in there and tighten these down now I'm going to put the other one on and we'll turn it on and check for leaks before we turn the electric on we're going to turn the water on we're going to look for leaks here here and here and here okay let's and it's filling up now once this fills up I'm gonna go uh, go over and turn it on. You don't want to turn it on yet. You want to have water in there because you don't want them heating elements to be on with no water. So. I can hear it fill up. Huh? It's filling up fast. <laughs> she said, "I can hear it fill up. <laughs> it's filling up fast." Right. This is kind of. I may, since I know what I need now, I may uh, change these later to shorter ones. So. Too so long. they're. Well, I just don't like the looks of that. No. I mean, it, it, it doesn't hurt anything, guys. It's just aesthetics, you know. So, I'm going to have, well, I'll take you in. I'll show you how, how you burp it. All you do is you turn your your uh, hot water on in all your sinks and, and bathtubs or whatever. 
of course we can't do it in the uh, the kitchen yet but I'd have to do that anyway because I mean you're going to use it but so yeah this is uh so we'll go in and we'll turn them on and what it does is spit out I'll show you okay so we're in the bathroom now we're going to turn this on and it might start spitting we got to turn this on because I know it's got to be air in them but anyway just let them run for you know a couple minutes you, what they'll do sometimes is that right there look at that that's coming out of the line so I'm going to let this do its thing and I'll be back with you and we'll turn it on ok guys now I'll show you how to do your thermostat there's little thermostats in each one of these there's one up here and one down at the bottom you just take this cover off make sure you do it when the electric is off and I already set this one and then I thought well I better show them so I will do it again for you it's only one screw all right and you lift this up that knob right there okay now I always set mine at 140 but it's a matter of preference uh, like I was telling monkey some people set it just where they like it so they don't have to tr mix the whole cold and hot see it's just a little screwdriver and see I got this one set at 140 140 degrees that's Fahrenheit okay uh, a lot of people set it just where it's just hot enough for them so when they get in the shower or bath they just turn the hot water on and that's it um, but I like to run it about 140, you know, for doing dishes and stuff like that. So, and that's how you do that. Now, I'll put you back up here and I'll show you how that goes on. And there's one at the bottom, too. Same exact, exact same thing as what's up here. You just, and you want them both set as even, you know, if it's 140, set it both at exactly 140. Because this heats the bottom part of your water, this heats the top part of your water. So, and then you got your little cover that goes back on here. Now it goes inside like that. Okay. It, it slides in. And then you just put your screwdriver back on, or your screw back in. Just make sure, like I said, you make sure you adjust them the same. And if you notice, they're not all numbered, like 110, 120, you know what I mean? And you gotta give them a while to change, you know, like, like when you set your refrigerator. When you set the, the temperature on it, it's not gonna change immediately. It's gonna take a day or so, same way with this. But make sure you get them as close as possible. You know, like you don't want this one set at 140 and that one set around 100. You you, you don't want that or vice versa. So try to get them set as as good as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out here and I'm going to go turn the uh, I'm going to go turn the power on and make sure there's no sparks. Okay. So I'll leave you on just in case. You'll be looking under here if there's any sparks that's going to come out of here. No sparks. Good. No sparks, yay. No sparks. We're alive. <laughs> yep, and this is alive. Yeah, um, alive. Like I said, now code. This this has to be within six inches of your floor. Uh, what I would have liked to have done is move this or take this. There's a hole in the wall. From where the original one used to go out through i'd like to do that but instead of trying to route a bunch of plumbing it back in there i may just run a straight piece of pipe down six inches from the floor and it's code everything i do is codes all right so it should be heating up now um we're going to give it a couple hours and we're going to check it out so hang tight we'll be right back with you okay guys here we go i got my meat thermometer here <laughs> I don't know if they can read that. It might be me. 78 degrees. <laughs> now, let's turn this on.
I mean, it still won't take it a minute because it just got to run 50 feet or whatever. So mm -hmm. there it goes. Just get warm. So, because it runs up the wall, across over into the kitchen where it splits off, and then over from the kitchen into the uh, <clears throat> uh, into the garage, and then down the wall, the wall in the garage, and then over the hot water tank. There it goes. Now it's been how long? What well, was 40 minutes? Been about 45 minutes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just using a meat thermometer, so it's not going to be real accurate, but we'll get an idea of what we're running here, and I'll show it to you. We're at 96 right now. There's 100, 105, 113, 14. It's raising. There's 120, 122, 23. There's 125 right there. It's been about 45 minutes, so I don't know if they can see that. Yeah. There. 125. It's been about 45 minutes. That's pretty good for just being Put in. Yeah, well, I'm using this meat thermometer too, so it's not going to be like super accurate. But. Right. Got to set on, there's 127. Like I said, I set it on 140, which I may have to turn it down. But there's 127 right there, and it's hot. You can't hold your hand under it. There's 129. So yeah, uh, about when it hits an hour, it'll, be, it'll probably be pushing to 140. So overnight, it'll definitely hit 140. Like I said, we just put it in. So 129. There we wow. go. It's moving on up. Yep. And with this, this is a coffee maker because we have no kitchen countertop or sink so <laughs> so I make my coffee in the so kitchen bathroom monkey <laughs> and I wash my dishes in the tub yeah she I walked in here the other night she used her mom's uh, shower bench and, and had herself a little dishwashing station there yep <laughs> make do what you got <laughs> but this is just temporary so yeah we don't live like this no <laughs> So, anyway, guys, there you go. That's how you do it, start to finish. Like I said, the lines were 15 bucks a piece. If you have to get the valve, that line with the valve on it's 30 It's $28 itself. But since I already had a working valve in there, I just had to get the lines that were 15 bucks a piece. There's 30 bucks, mm -hmm. And the drip pan, which we're not going to use because I just don't have room for it there, is 15 so we can take it back. So... <laughs> Um, my fifteen dollars on a yeah. bent tray. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> uh, and it was four forty nine. So tax and everything came out to five twenty six or something. Yeah, like something that. like that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. man, like I said, if you know, if you don't need to pan, you know, that's going to save you ten to fifteen dollars because plastic ones are ten. The mm -hmm. aluminum ones was fifteen. So I mean, you know, you're looking at a little over. You're looking at five hundred and ten to. 520 530 depending on what all you need to buy but right everything i use there you know is like the saw i mean you may have to get cutters if you don't have that stuff but right. you know i got that so yep. there you go i got a new water tank and no more rust yay <laughs> yeah, i can actually wash my hair again the rust in the tub will mm. go away now oh thank god yeah it's been horrible and in there in that sink yeah yeah so it'll all go away and your hair won't turn red no more no more yeah i've all been right. washing my hair in the sink <coughs> yeah well but i had bottled water i had to buy bottled water yeah <laughs> <laughs> distilled water so that was expensive so this should save us money all the way around yeah yeah and i knew I, it was coming i don't so. have to move dishes to uh mm -hmm. take a shower now yeah. so. And he came and measured for the counters today. Yeah, so. he came and measured them. So hopefully tomorrow. He said Friday or Monday. I asked him if it was sooner than later. <laughs> I said, I want my sink back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he laughed. So. so there you guys go. That's that's how you do it. It's yep. real easy. It is as easy as I showed. Trust me. 
if if you know if you're any kind of a handy person handy man handy woman handy lady whatever i think you can do it just fine yeah. just follow the steps of what i did simple make sure i didn't know if i said it but i used sandpaper on those plastic lines cleaned them up make sure there was nothing in there and right they say don't use sandpaper i've been doing it for 30 years and never had an issue i've probably in the past 20 years i've probably put in 50 hot water heaters for people mm -hmm. including my own and i've never had an issue no i did have one of those cleaners and make a special cleaner goes on there and i got the feeling inside there that some of them are little pieces of sandpaper in there and some of them are little brushes wire brushes and some of them are like these little ceramic things mm -hmm. I'm like, the one with sandpaper, isn't it that what they say don't use? <laughs> that makes sense, doesn't it? Just use 80 grit, a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, you'll be fine, it won't leak. So make sure you cut it off straight, too. So yeah. straight as you can get it, you'll be all right. Yay! So there you go. Now, in about 10, 12 years, monkey can do it. No, I'll be too old. I'm older than you. I'll be older. Too old. You'll have to do. <laughs> if I'm gonna change one every ten years, I'm good with that. So mm. uh, they have the 550 or the 5500 watt. It's like a hundred dollars more, and you get a ten year or a nine year warranty with it. This is a six year warranty and it's 4500 watts. So I knew the breakers would take it because that's what our other one was. So we're good to go. Yep. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Mikey says she's out for now, y'all. <laughs> and Shea Bear, Myth Man Legend, we're gone for now, guys. Uh, stay safe and stay tuned for more videos. We'll chat at you soon. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.